Okay, so this video is going to kind of pick up where uh, where the last one uh, left off. So if you haven't watched uh, that previous video, uh, you're going to probably want to uh, go through and uh, and watch that. Um, let's take a look at a bunch of a uh, number of other things right now too. Okay, so uh, you'll recall last time we were looking at all, all these various things for uh, working with uh, with this array. We talked about uh, using anonymous functions for uh, for shortening our code. Um, we looked at uh, some of these things, um, and you know, so one of the things I did want to uh, want to point out here um, is another way of kind of conceptualizing, shortening, etc. Um, this bit of code here, right? So this this for each, um, notice really what we're doing is we're taking all of the elements from our array, from nums, and we're, um, we're basically putting them out onto the uh, standard output stream. Um, you could really actually think of this as a copy operation. Um, and the reason that I, uh, that I bring this up is because uh, is because if we go back to our um, if we go back to our handy uh, our handy references, uh, we can actually find exactly such a thing. So uh, so notice in the algorithm header there is uh, there is the copy. Uh, generic function, right? So if we take a look at that, uh, we see that uh, basically we need to specify the beginning and ending. We need to specify um, a result, and uh, and then um, and then the place that is uh, where things are uh, when things are going, and uh, then we should be uh, we should be good to go. Okay, so let's take a look at um, at that, right? So I can replace this code here with a call to copy. Right, and actually, I'll do it. Uh, kind of do it this way. Oh, I think I might have messed it up. Oops. Okay, let's just, uh, we'll do it this way. All right, so instead of for each, uh, we're going to do a, uh, a copy. Um, our input range is going to be the same. That is, we're going to copy all of the numbers. Um, the difference is we are going to specify, we need to specify where we want to copy this to. Okay, so I'm going to, for that, I'm going to use an OStream uh, iterator. And I'll specify that uh, that it takes a string. So I'm actually going to need another header here. Um, include iterator. There we are. Um, and uh, let's see. So we will in fact uh, we will in fact do that. And then I believe I can do something like uh, this. Okay. So let's see, uh, O stream iterator, yes, and um, right, we want to wrap, uh, that's right. So we want to wrap C out, and uh, we're going to use um, this stuff here. We'll see what that is in just a minute. Okay, so now that I have that, just going to uh, going to comment out uh, this section, right? So we're going to copy uh, from the beginning of the nums to the end of nums, um, and our destination, the starting part of our destination, is this O stream iterator um, that uh, that is uh, bound around C out. Okay, and oops, and so it dies a horrible death. All right, let's take a look at uh, at what's going on. Ah, okay. Now I, I actually, as I'm looking at it, um, I realize exactly what the error is. The error is um, I was thinking about uh, another example. I'll probably work up to. Um, but right now, uh, what I'm actually outputting are integers. I'm not outputting strings. I'm outputting integers. So that means my O stream iterator here uh, needs to uh, needs to be uh, 
needs to have a int for uh, for its type parameter. All right, let's give that a try. Right, so we go ahead and run that, and notice um, now I get I have output um, all of the uh, all of the individual elements, and we see that uh, that they are uh, that they are each. Um, terminated by a comma space, right? That's what we're getting. Uh, that's what this part is here. So if we wanted just a space, um, we could do something like that. Um, if we wanted them all on a, uh, all on a new line, um, we could certainly do that. Okay. And so forth, right? So you get the idea of how this, uh, how this actually works, right? And again, it's about the fact that uh, that we have code now that uh, that basically expresses our intent, right? We're basically just copying all the elements from from our array um, to standard out. Okay, so you know another way of kind of dealing with this stuff, uh, making it a little more concise and, and, and so forth. All right. Okay. So, um, and you know, there is a, I believe there is a default. I forget actually what it is. Uh, let's take a look. Right. So yes. Right. So if I don't provide any, uh, kind of a separator notice, uh, they just kind of all, uh, glom together like that. Okay, so there it is. It gives us uh, it gives us our spaces and so forth. Now let's take a look at uh, at some other things, right? So we saw last time we have this issue with uh, with arrays and um, and the fact that uh, that C does not bound bounds check its arrays. Okay, um, that's a that's a very very big problem. Um, that can uh, that and and as I said, that can lead to uh, security holes and so forth. Um, additionally, of course, we have the uh, we have the nastiness that uh, that arrays are fixed size. So if we want to expand and contract and so forth, then um, then we may then uh, then we have to uh, then we kind of have to resort to other tricks and so forth. Okay, so let's talk about um, a bunch of these things let's talk also about uh let's just start with uh with some of the uh some of the general deficiencies of arrays um for instance suppose that i wanted to have um a another another or let's call it others um and so i'll have another array here and let me make it the same size so one two three four five right so we have uh we have five elements there and um then let's say that i want to make a copy of um of these original numbers right so i could say something like uh set others equal to nums right so i do that and you'll notice you're, you're not allowed to actually do such a thing you can't do um assignment of one array into um into another okay that's just not going to be allowed um now you know i could try to kludge around this by doing some weird things like uh like something like that um and you know so we can take a look we'll see yeah notice that that actually compiles but now what i really have is i have others which is really just another name for nums so if i happen to change the value in others it's also going to change the value in nums again may not be really what we want okay so got some issues with that all right well, let me gotta just comment this out all right so how can we get around this right um it turns out that uh, the standard template library and C++ in general has a number of containers, a uh, number of containers that uh, it will allow us to uh, to store uh, to store information in different ways. And this uh, this in fact kind of uh, this in fact um, sort of starts to get at uh, at part of what this class is really about, um, this notion of data structures, right? Um, so you'll see actually here we have uh, the containers library, and there are these various lists, and there's actually something called array, right? So if I go to um, std array, this is a container class built into C++ 11 and higher um, that is, and notice, 
It's a container that encapsulates fixed size arrays. You say, well, wait a minute, why, why would you want such a thing? Why would you need such a thing? Why would you care about such a thing? Um, you know, why have that if we have the standard arrays? Well, let me show you. Okay, so uh, let me go back over here. Um, I'm just gonna kind of clean up some of this, uh, some of these comments in the code and so forth, get rid of the, the ones that, uh, that we're not really using right now. Um, so that that way, as you're looking at this code later on, uh, that'll be a little clearer. I'm gonna leave that one in because uh, we just made the modifications for that. And then we'll get rid of, uh, get rid of this stuff here. All right, so there, files, uh, files a little bit more manageable and so forth. All right. Um, so as we were talking about, you know, we had uh, we had this issue with uh, with nums and not being able to easily copy them and so forth, right? So let's actually uh, let's actually take a look at um, at in, yeah I can spell uh, in include. Let's take a look at uh, dealing with some of those issues, right? So I'm going to include the array header. And then I'm going to go ahead and create uh, my own array. So I will say, oops, so I will say, I want an array that's going to store, for instance, integers. And, um, and I know that I'm going to uh, store five of them, right? And so then we can call it, um, I'll call it a nums. And then we'll set it equal to just like we did before, the one, the three, um, actually, how about we'll do something a little different? Four, six, eight, ten, etc. Right. So here now I have um, I have an STD array. I have the array container class that stores the numbers two, four, six, eight, ten. Right. Notice it is also of a fixed size. Okay. Now. What kinds of things can, uh, let's see, what are we getting here? Uh, that's fine. Okay, so, and we can do roughly the same kinds of things that we have already been doing with this, right? In fact, um, you know, to, to, to have all of my other code still work, um, I really don't actually have to do much of anything. For instance, uh, notice if I happen to comment that out and actually change this to nums, Right, so literally, I'm just switching now nums to uh, to be this uh, array container, and what I want to show you is, yeah, it still works. Okay, it still works. I didn't have to actually change any of my other code. Right, my for each code works just the same because uh, because we can uh, because begin and end work automatically for um, for the array container class. Copy also again, you know, no issues there. Um, everything uh, everything just kind of works. Okay, so that's actually really really nice. Um, but what else does it give us? Okay, so let's take a let's take another look here. I'm just gonna kind of switch. Uh, actually, yeah, well, I'll leave it as dumps. All right. Um, I don't really need before in there anymore, um, and I don't really need after. So again, I'm going to get rid of those just to kind of make life a little easier. All right. So um, recall that we did see, you know, we were looking at before things like this. You know, what happens? Uh, let's go. Let's go to ten thousand or uh, num sum ten sum ten thousand and set it equal to something. Okay. So what happens there? Right and yeah, certainly um, our program dies a horrible death. You know, we would hope uh, we would hope that uh, that that's the case. How about if it's uh, how about if it's smaller, right? So if we uh, if we go to say something like six, right? And notice again that just kind of quietly wrote out to uh, to that particular to the particular um, that particular spot. Okay, so you might say, okay, well, so basically it behaves just like the uh, the built-in array data structure. So why do we care? Well, we care because in fact, while the square bracket, the array indexing operator, has been overloaded for this to work the same as the original one, there is in fact another version. So we can call the at member function on nums. And that one works very similarly 
to the way that uh, to the way that the array indexing operator works, except for that. Notice essentially what's happening is now we have an array that can check to make sure that we are not going outside the bounds, right? This array knows exactly how big it is. And we can always access that by calling the size member function, right? So again, um, let me just comment out that code because we already know that that's going to generate an error, right? Nums has size of five, okay? I can't do something like that with a, with a built-in C++ array because built-in C++ arrays don't know how many elements they have. Okay, so this array carries around with it the information about exactly how many elements it can store. Okay, so that means that then we can have smarter operations like, for instance, the at method that will allow us to uh, bounds check on the array, right? So, for instance, uh, suppose I try to go off, um, off of the other side, I don't know, uh, 22, right? And again, that dies a horrible death. Why? Because the value basically um, that has to be uh, has to be zero or higher, and uh, can't go beyond the sides of the size of the array. Okay, so that one's good. Um, also, you know, another sort of quick little uh, tester knowledge kind of thing. How about this? All right, is this going to be good? All right, ask yourself the question. So, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? Uh, let's take a look. Um, so I'll say nums at uh, 5 is equal to 7. So if I run it, and it dies, right? Now, you may or may not have been surprised about this, okay? Um, take a look. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? I have 5 elements. I should be able to, uh, to go and assign that last element, right? Shouldn't that be allowed? Remember, we start counting at 0. This is... Um, this is at index 0, this is at index 1, this is at index 2, 3, and 4, right? Five, index 5 is out of bounds. Okay. Now, just to prove that, uh, that uh, the at function doesn't always uh, generate, a, uh, generate an error, um, suppose, I, uh, suppose I go to some place that is within the bounds, um, and let's just make that 200, and uh, now when I, uh, when I run this, right, uh, yeah, so then we have, there's our 200, uh, which is cubed at this point, um, and so we can see that. All right. Um, I'm not sure if this actually works, and so might as well actually try it. Uh, so let me try outputting. Um, no, yeah, it's actually already complaining. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing it's uh, so. It does, so it looks like uh, that is not overloaded for um, for the uh, for the output operator. All right, it's worth a shot. Um, so notice there's uh, there's what we have for uh, for. Um, for the array type, okay? Now, so by using the at method, uh, or the at member function, that means that we now have bounds checked access, okay? So that's generally a really, really good idea. It means we can, uh, we can be much more confident about, uh, about our code in that it is not going to, uh, not going to go outside the bounds of, uh, of the array, okay? And that's clearly something that we, uh, that we want, okay? Now, let me show you another thing as well. Something else that's, uh, that's actually really nice about this um, is that if I have uh, another array, so, for instance, um, that happens to also be the same size, let's call it others, um, I am, in fact, able to do assignment on these. So I can say others is equal to nums, right? Notice, that seems to compile, right? And let's verify that, uh, that that's actually working, right? So we're going to use our little copy code. We'll say copy uh, others, starting at the beginning of others, go to the 
end of others and we'll do our ostream iterator um printing out ints um using c out and space okay um and yes i probably need and and l in there And maybe some additional formatting, just so that uh, now we can actually see, right? So others has uh, has those values, two hundred, blah 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 blah. Okay, that's cool, right? Right, right there seems like it's a uh, seems like it's a it's a it's very helpful. It's a great idea. Um, that's going to uh, that's going to save us some time. But here's the thing that you should be asking yourself. The thing that you should be asking yourself is is this really doing sort of the right thing? Is it really giving us a copy, right? And so what I mean by that is after I do this assignment, if I happen to make a change, let's say I did others, um, well, again, try to get in the habit of, uh, of using that. Uh, suppose I did this, set others um, sub zero to 100, right? So that means um, if this is, if line 22 is doing the right thing, that is, it really is doing a proper copy, um, what I should have is my own version of the array. So changing this means that uh, when I print out others, I'll see 100 as the first element. However, this, uh, this number here should stay the same, right? Because over here, right, in fact, let's, The cubed nums is that, right? So let's take a look. Yeah, notice others has 100 and then so forth. The cubed nums, notice, um, was not modified, right? And again, if that's a little hard to uh, a little hard to see, let me just go ahead and do this, right? So I'll say uh, this is nums, and uh, same thing here. There's nums. Okay, and uh, yeah, right, so there's others, there's nums, right? So after the assignment and after changing the first element of, uh, of others, notice that nums uh, was not, uh, nums first value was not modified. Okay, so it really is doing a proper copy. Um, and in fact, it's, it's going beyond that. Um, that is, you know, here I'm doing, here for instance, I, am, uh, I have an array of integers. Um, but if I was using um, an array of some class type, uh, what it would actually do in in, um, in this copy operation is it would call the copy constructor of that class type okay so it really would make copies proper copies um, of the uh, of the objects that it's storing okay so that's again very very cool very very helpful now there is another type of a container that uh, that's closely related to array, and I'm going to talk about that. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, actually next in in uh, in our next video.